Hi everyone, today I'm going to discuss about Apollinari Mabini's life. So, I'm Rufa Carson Johnson, your reporter for today's topic. So, since I am the last reporter, um, paspason lang na to ni. So, okay. And the picture that you see is uh, the is Mr. Apollinari Mabini, E. Maranan, or Y. Maranan. So, Apollinari Mabini was born on July 23, 1864, in Barangay Talaga in Tanawan, Batangas. So, he was the second of eight children of Janisha Maranan I. Magpantay, a vendor in the Tanawan market, and in essential Leon Mabini, Wailira, an illiterate peasant. So, Apolinario Mabini was a Filipino revolution, revolutionary leader, an educator, a lawyer, and a state, statesman who served first as a legal and constitutional advisor to the revolutionary government, and then as the, as the first prime minister of the Philippines upon the establishment of the first Philippine Republic. So, as you can see, um, Filipino uh, Apolinario Mabini was known as the in Tagalog was known as the Utak ng Himagsikan because of his capable of um, he was a um, what do you call this one? An intelligent person. So, Apolinario Mabini Apolinario Mabini attended the historical school of Father Valerio Malabanan located in Lipa. Being poor, Apolinario Mabini was able to get educated due to the Malabanan school's matriculation of students based on their academic merit rather than <coughs> rather than ability of the parents to pay. He would meet future leader Miguel Malvar while studying in Lipa. So, when we say matriculation, um, guys, um, uh, since Bright man si Apolinario, she was, uh, he was passed by that particular of Kuan, um, school. So, at that time, he met or meet, met lang sa, uh, a future leader, Miguel Mal Malvar. So, okay. Can you see Miguel Malvar? Ang tinuto niya ng name is Miguel Malvar Y. Carpio. So, he was a Filipino general who served during the Philippine Revolution and subsequently during the Philippine-American War. So, muna siya ilaang. Um, um, real life. So, in 1881, Mabini received a scholarship from Colegio de San Juan de Letran in Manila. An anecdote about his stay there says that a professor there decided to pick on him because his shabby clothing clearly showed he was poor. So, ang gipakita ni uh, Mabini Dri before was kuan siya baka nang lousy iya ang um sinina nga makita jud ni mo siya nga publika ayo so at mabini amazed the professor by answering a series of very difficult question with ease so though lisud ka ayo nga mga questions nga gihatag sa professor ni mabini but mabini was a you know na is he was a intelligent person or shall we say he has a capability of like um being intelligent so his studies at Letran were periodically interrupted by a chronic lack of funds and he earned money for his board and lodging by teaching children 
So, um, while he's studying in the college, um, Mabini was able to um, shall we say, uh, fund his needs uh, by and uh, by teaching children there. So, mura siya nagtutor. So, aside from that, maka libre sa siya sa iya ang bayaron or rent sa iyang house asta sa iyang board so so for kuan low studies mabini's mother had wanted him him to enter the priesthood but his desire to defend the poor made him decide to study law instead so mabini's um desire is um he wants her son his son to study um to study in priesthood shall we say pari or kaning ugsa uban pa kaning an pastor or ganyan but um but mabini um decide himself that he are going to study law to defend the poor so muna iya ang gusto a year after receiving his bachelor in arts with with highest honors and the title professor of latin from litran he moved on to the university university of santo tomas where he received his law degree in 1894 so mabini joined the guild of lawyers after graduation but he did not choose to practice law in a professional capacity he did not set up his own law office and instead continued to work in the office of an notary public so instead of Ma, instead mabini put his knowledge of law to much use during the days of the philippine revolution and the filipino american war so joaquin notes that all his contributions to philippine history somehow involved the law kanishi joaquin munishai um a philippine literature artist who wrote or who can written the the story or the um the life of joaquin of uh yeah then during the masonry and la lega philippines at this time mabini joined the fraternity of freeman's free masonry in september 1892 affiliating with lodge balagtas and taking on the name katabay so the following year mabini became a member of la lega filipina which was being resuscitated after the arrest of its founder jose rizal in 1892 mabini was made secretary of its new supreme council this was mabini's first time to join an explicitly patriotic organization so um so mabini whose advocacies favored the reformist movement pushed for the organization to continue its goals of supporting la solidaridad and the reforms it's advocated when more revolutionary members of the la lega indicated that they did not think the reform movement was getting results and wanted to more openly support the revolution la lega filipina split into two factor factions this is the moderate cuerpo de compromisorios and which wanted simply to continue to support the revolution and the explicitly explicitly revolutionary katipunan so mabini joined the cuerpo de compromisorios when jose rizal part of the la lega filipina was executed in december that year however he changed his mind and gave the revolution his whole heart wholehearted support so at this time pull you an eventual paralysis so in the 
time, uh, in the year of 1895, Mabini was struck by polio. So, and the disease gradually incapacita incapacitated him until January 1896 when he finally lost the use of both of his legs. So, on this year, guys, kuan na uh, niya siya sa iyang polio. So, naabot siya ng time nga kuan kanin dili na niya ma-use ang iyang both legs. So, it's very confusing. So, comparing Mabini's generation of Filipino intellectuals to the previous one of Jose Rizal and the other members of the propagandist movement, journalists and national artists of the Philippines for literature, Nick Joaquin describes Mabini's generation as the next, next iteration in the evolution of Filipino intellectual development. So, this is the year 1896, the revolution and the arrest. So when the plans of the Katipunan were discovered by Spanish authorities and the first active phase of the 1896 Philippine Revolution began in earnest, Mabini still ill was arrested along with the numerous other members of La Lega Filipina. So, ang... Um, so when the time when the in this year no kuan kining na discovered sa Spanish nga ang kuan ang mga gipang buhat ni Mabini so at that time gi arrest siya bisag na agi siya bisag na siya gibati so 13 patriots arrested in Cavite were tried and eventually executed earning them the title of 13 martyrs of Cavite. Cavite. Sige pang patay sila, 13 martyrs so kadaghan kay anak nila. My God. So, as a result, himself was accused of being party to the revolution. So, he was he was one of the revolts. So, that's why. The, uh, and he would and would eventually be, eventually be executed in December that year. When the Spanish authorities saw that Mabini was paralyzed, however, they decided to release him. Naluwi said sila. So, at this time, the advisor to the revolutionary, revolutionary government, which is si Kuan, si Emilio Aguinaldo, so sent to the hospital after his arrest, Mabini remained in ill health for a considerable considerable time. He was seeking the curative properties of the hot spring in Los Banos, Laguna in eighteen ninety-eight when Emilio Aguinaldo sent for him, asking him to serve as advisor to the revolution. So during this convalescent period, Mabini wrote the pump pamphlets El Verdadero de Calugo and Ordinanzas de la Revolución. So this was Mabini's um, Yangipang Sulat. So Aguinaldo was impressed by these works and by Mabini's role as a leading figure in La Lega Filipina and made arrangements for Mabini to the broad from to be brought from Los Banos to Kuwait, Cavite. It took hundreds of men taking turns carrying his hammock to portage Mabini to Kuwait. So, kadaghan kay sa hundreds of men, sainan biya po mo, ana. <laughs> Giduyan siya. Mura siya gi sakay sa um, si tao ga niya. Giduyanan bitaw siya guys nga. Hammock ka ng Mura siya gigdaanan, pero form of duyan siya. Kay, sakay raba siya. Makita na na later on. So, he continued to serve as the chief advisor for General, General Aguinaldo after the Philippine Declaration of Entered Independence on June 12. He drafted, decreased, and edited the Constitution for the First Philippine Republic, including the framework of the revolutionary government, which was Im implemented in, Mal in Malulos in 1899. So, Prime Minister of the Philippines. Shortly, 
after Aguinaldo's return to the Philippines from exile in Hong Kong in May 1898, he tasked Mabini with helping him establish a government. Mabini authored the the June eight in June eighteen nine eighteen ninety eight decree which established the dictatorial government of the Philippines. After the Malulu's constitution, the basic law of the first republic, first Philippine Republic was promulgated on January 21, 1899. Mabini was appointed prime minister and also a foreign minister. So, he then led the first cabinet of the of the republic. Wow. So Mabini found himself in the center of the most critical period in the new country's history, grappling with problems until then and imagined. Most notable of this were his negotiations with Americans, which began on March 6, 1899. So, <laughs> the United States and the Philippine Republic were embroiled in extremely contentious, contentious, and contentious, and eventually violent confrontations. So, when we say um, embroiled, I don't know. All right. When I say embroiled, embroiled guys, when I say uh, mga difficult situation or conflict, so nag an uh, conflict and extremely contentious and eventual violent confrontations, mga confrontations. So during the negotiations of for peace, Americans Americans proffered Mabini autonomy for Aguinaldo's new government. But the talks failed because Mabini's conditions included a ceasefire which was rejected. Oh my. Since kuan kining uh, negotiations during the negotiations for peace. So So si Mabini nag tried siya nga nga stop ni nga kanang mag-away ba ang Philippines o ang United States but wala gihapon siya ni approve it was rejected Mabini negotiate, negotiated once again seeking for an armistice instead but the talks failed yet again oh my goodness na failed na sad si Mabini when we say um, armistice guys it is a formal agreement of warning parties to stop uh, to stop okay warning parties to stop fighting it is uh, not um um thoroughly um can I uh, it's just a temporary one but temporary or nga stopping off opens up to warfare by agreement so temporary just but no must stop lang jud ang um, fighting so eventually feeling that the americans were not negotiating bona fide he forced war the americans and supported war he resigned from government on may 7 1899 so may resign na lang guys Kay di jun sugot ang American nga makikuan ba magnegotiate sa iya ah. At that time no ni resign na lang you see mabini. So this is the Philippine American War exile and return. So the Philippine American War saw Mabini taken more seriously as a threat by the Americans that he was under the Spanish says national artist for literature of Chanel Jose. Jose. So, the Spaniards underestimated Mabini primarily because he was a cripple, no? They are under they underestimated Mabini because he he could not use his both legs because of his because of his 
disability guys that's how rude spaniards he had they known for his intellectual perspica perspicacity they would have killed him earlier kung wala pa sila kabalunga ah uh, if they don't if know uh, so kung wala nila mahibalan nga in ana di ka bright si uh, mabini so gipatay na unta so gipatay na unta dayon si mabini at the time nga ilang na ilhan siya but they uh, they just let him uh, gipsagdan ra nila because one because of his intellectual intellectual that's how that's why the spaniards let mabini li alive so the americans did not they were aware of his superior intelligence his tenacity when he faced them in negotiation for autonomy and ceasefire so on december 10 1899 he was captured by americans at cuyapo nueva isia but granted leave to meet with wh theft in 1901 he was exiled to guam along with scores of revolutionists americans referred to as insurrectos or the, the rebels and who refused to swear filthy to the united states when bridge general arthur MacArthur jr was asked to explain by the u.s senate why mabini had to be deported and he cabled cabled so mabini deported a most active agitator persistently and defiantly refusing amnesty and maintaining correspondence with insurgents in the field while living in manila luzon so mabini returned to the philippines after agreeing to take the oath of allegiance to the united states of february 26 1903 before the collector of customs customs on that on the day he sailed he issued his statements to the press so he said after tall two long years i am returning so to speak completely disoriented and what is worst almost overcome by disease and sufferings nevertheless i hope after some time of rest and study still to be of some use unless i have returned to the islands of the sole purpose of dying to the gadrin chagrin of the american colonial officials mabini resumed his work for agitating for independence for the philippines soon after his return from exile so mabini's death not long after his return Mabini's, Mabini died of cholera in Manila in, on May 13, 1903 at the age of 38. So Mabini's chief of work, La Revolution Filipina, a recent analysis and cogent argument concerning the ideological implications of the revolution against Spain and the resistance to the American invaders, reveals the progressive and democratic impulse behind his thinking. He always tried to mediate between the people's will and the decisions of their leaders. He was a selfless and dedicated patriot. So this is how they um gikarga nila si kuan mabini mabini shrine they can get it sila na. so that's all my report i am johnson and i hope mm, you learn something about um, the story of the life of apolinario mabini thank you and god bless